Hello booktube! Welcome back to All the Worlds a Page. My name is Janelle and I'm here today with a book review for you. This book is a piece of nonfiction, and it is called A Call of a Midwife, um, a memoir of birth, joy, and hard times by Jennifer Worth. Jennifer Worth was a midwife in East End London in the 1950s, which was the poorest, most derelict part of London. And she was inspired to write this book because she heard that there wasn't a lot of literature on midwives, and so she wanted to remedy that. Um, this book is tender, it is heartfelt, it is... Um, such a breath of fresh air. Now I first found this book because um, I was a fan of the TV series which um, is on Netflix if you live in America. Um, the way that I actually found this TV series um, is a little bit of a sad story. So I, um, so my senior year of high school my grandfather died. Um, he uh, had a stroke, my, um, he had a stroke in um, May and he soldiered on, but unfortunately, um, uh, the doctors were not able to um, revive him and because there was too much brain damage. And so he passed away uh, right before I graduated. And, um, and I remember at his funeral, at the reception, the, um, there was a woman who was talking to um, several of my grandma's friends, and she was talking about Call the Midwife. And she was talking about how in the... Um, she was talking about the TV series and how there was one character um, who I now know to be Chummy and um, or Camilla and she um, because she had such an aristocratic upbringing she did not know how to ride a bicycle and that's how the midwives all traveled to their um, to their patients was by bicycle um, and it's because the streets were too narrow to allow for cars to pass and um, and also um, the hospital um, they didn't work they didn't technically work for a hospital they work for um, the midwives worked for a um, a convent, a small convent where all the nuns are also nurses and midwives, and so um, and they um, they had uh, vowed to serve the poorest of the poor, and so they um, they delivered about in East End um, 80 to 100 babies per month. This is in the 1950s. This is before the pill became available. Um, so you know, families easily have 15, 18, 20 children, um, and they're all living together in these derelict houses that were um, deemed unsafe for human um, human habitation, but there's nowhere else for them to go, so they, um, so they continue to live in them. Um, anyways, um, getting back to the story, so Camilla doesn't know how to ride a bicycle, and so she has to uh, learn, and, um, and so there's this uh, charming uh, scene in the TV show and then also in the book um, where she um, is, uh, she's this great six foot two, enormously tall woman and she, um, and she's um, falling off on the streets and, uh, and children are laughing at her, but she will not be deterred because she will get to her patients on time and she is going to learn how to ride a bicycle. And she does. Um, but she... But this woman who mentioned this at my uh, grandfather's funeral, he, um, she said, um, she, the way she described it just seemed so charming to me. So I got home and I was home for a uh, home for summer break. Um, um, I had some free time because um, I had just graduated high school. So I, um, so I looked up the TV series and I loved it, and it was so healing to me. Um, because I was enormously close to my grandfather, and um, so I was very, um, I, I took it very hard when he passed, and, um, and so just even the music, the do-do-do, do-do-do-do, do-do-do, do-do-do-do-do, like, um, just even the familiarity of the music now, I can hear it, and it brings me back to, um, to June and towards, um, thoughts of rebirth and of rejuvenation and, um, and of healing. Um, and that's what I wanted to talk about today because this book, um, the midwives, um, and, um, Jennifer, Jennifer Worth talks about this in her book. East End was a very dangerous place. Um, um, but as the midwives, they had, um, they were seen almost as, um, they were given almost a sacred place in the community, and because of that, they weren't um, they weren't harmed. They were almost um, they um, they didn't see the worst of the worst. They didn't see the worst of the poverty, the worst of the prostitution. They didn't see the um, 
they were shielded from a lot of it because they were so highly respected. And, um, and when you read the book as opposed to watching the TV series, you really do get a sense a lot more um, for how much, um, for how poverty stricken this entire community is. Um, it's a lot more apparent. And I think part of that may have been watered down a little bit to make the TV series a little more palatable. Um, but, um, but the book really presents, it's not just a sort of like medical, um, a medical story. It's also a sort of sociological picture of a way of life that no longer is. Um, this is 1950s London. Um, the people who are adults now were children and were sequestered away during the war. Um, London is still, um, riot writhing. It's still um, reeling from um, from having been bombed so heavily. Um, so there's lots of derelict structures all over the city. Um, um, the pill hadn't co um, hadn't come in yet. So um, so the, you know there's just children, child after child after child being born, um, and it's really a way of life that no longer is because um, with the 60s came the sexual revolution and the pill and the um, and the work on the docks dried up um, and um, and these homes were bulldozed and so these people their their way of life no longer exists so you really get a picture of how they lived and of how um, in you really get an intimate ver intimate picture of um, of their way of life, and it's um, and the way she portrays it is quite beautiful. I just wanted to read her opening um, sentence because it was quite interesting. Um, this is after the introduction. Why did I ever start this? I must have been mad. There were dozens of other things I could have been: a model, air hostess, or a ship stewardess. The ideas run through my head. All glamorous, highly paid jobs. Only an idiot would choose to be a work, a, a nurse, and now a midwife. And then she goes on to say that she, it's two thirty in the morning. She's already had a full days of work and more, and now she's getting called up to to attend a birth. Um, and as midwives, um, not only were they just highly respected in the community, they also um, they were um, given to see some of. The, um, the most joyous occasions in the, some of the most joyous occasions in these people's lives, the birth of their first child, the birth of um, their 25th child, and also their most tragic, um, when children did, when children were stillborn and when um, people passed away, when, um, and uh, it's just, and she talks about the privilege of being able to be at, at there, at the center, um, during those moments of life. And it's just, such this book I could have easily read it in an afternoon but I just wanted to savor it so I made it last about three or four days um, and um, there are two other book, books in the series that I intend on reading um, and I'm really looking forward to those two the only reason why I haven't read them yet is because I'm waiting for my library to bring them in um, but the characters um, who are all based off of real people are all so such unique and distinct voices um, like sister Evangelina um, something she uh, just as an example um, she had been um, a VAD nurse during World War one and um, after working in a factory she decided she wanted to do more so she became a VAD nurse and she um, and she decided that she wanted to go behind and um, behind the front lines to um, to nurse the soldiers who had been wounded because there was a dire need for uh, medical personnel to do that. And so she had to, so in order to do that, she and other VAD nurses had to jump out of planes and to get to the wounded. And here's what she said at that time. It was after the German spring offensive in 1918. Our men were wounded, stranded behind the line with no medical help. None could be sent to them by road, so the, an airlift was arranged. I parachuted down. The patient said, You've got guts, sister. Didn't you know that 50% of all those par early parachutes never opened up at all? Of course I knew, she said bluntly. It was all explained to us. No one was pressed. I volunteered. Wow. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine 
the emotional fortitude it takes to jump out of a plane knowing that there's only a 50% chance that your parachute is going to open, like, to willingly do that, that's just, that just speaks to how incredible of a person uh, Sister Evangelina was. And I just can't, um, and so that's why I really appreciated this book so much, is it really gave me just a picture of how exhausted so many of these people were to live through two world wars, a depression, and um, then to get to the 1950s. And uh, so it, this time really must have seemed idyllic to them. Um, and I learned so I learned a lot. I learned a lot about England. I learned a lot about London and a lot about midwifery. And what really strikes you when you read this is that there's so much about, um, what really strikes you while you read this is that while these people have so very little, you know, they may, there may be 25 of them crammed into, uh, into an apartment that has two bedrooms, two or three bedrooms and no bathroom. Um, like, there's such a message of hope and of rebirth, and I think that's part of the reason why it's resonated with so many people and why it seems like such a pure story, even though tragic things do happen. I was watching other reviews on this um, on this book, and um, something that um, that um, Climb the Stacks talked about, and I'll leave a link to her review down below, um, is that there's no cynicism in anyone's hearts here. And um, as a natural cynic, I also um, noticed that there's no villains, even though there are people who do dark deeds. Like, there's just people trying to make ends meet. And, um, and I think that's why this book is so healing for a lot of people. Like um, a lot of people talk about this book and the TV show that it, um, that it's based that based that is based off of this book um, being really healing and being like their comfort read um, or something that they like to binge watch when they're depressed and um, and I think that's why because this is a tale about um, life's most tender moments and the people who get to witness them and who are privileged enough to um, to see the happiest moments in a person's life. And I think that's what makes it so tender and so pure. Um, I really enjoyed this. Um, I highly recommend you pick it up if you need something that's just a little bit, um, a, a little bit of a pick me up. And um, I gave it four out of five stars. I hope you all are having a lovely day, and I will see you all soon. Doi.